going on, guys? John here with one of my good friends, Thaddeus. What's up, man? And we're actually in here because Thaddeus is going to get blood work done. He's due for his six-month checkup to make sure everything is where it needs to be. I mean, I look good, but you never know That's until that right. blood work That's comes through. That's right. <laughs> Looking good on the outside doesn't necessarily mean it's good on the inside. 100%. But we make sure that is is good on the inside and, and the, the outside. outside. And that's what it's all about. So at that point, we're going to get some blood work done on them, run all kinds of different tests, not just your regular CMP for your kidneys, your liver, and make sure your cholesterol is all right. We want to make sure everything's all right, even your hormones, mm -hmm. like free and told testosterone levels, progesterone levels, estradiol levels, IGF-1 levels, B12 levels, and a lot, lot more. So it's just some of the different things that we can help you out with here at Titan Medical Center. And that's what we help Thaddeus out with. So at that point, we want to make sure he keeps rocking and rolling and doing his thing. Thanks, Thaddeus, for coming in. Thank yeah, you. Thaddeus. Yeah, thank you. What's up guys, I'm John, and today I'm here with my awesome nurse practitioners, Chanel and Jess. Hello. Hey. And they took time out of their busy schedule today to share some time with me and you to maybe answer some of your top questions that we always get. So today, one of the main questions that we wanted to cover, I guess, that people really want to know was, what are the top benefits of hormone replacement therapy, I guess? You know, when a, let's say a female goes on hormone replacement therapy or a male goes on hormone replacement therapy, I guess it can affect them the exact same way, right? But what do you think the benefits are? What, what do you think, Chanel? Definitely just improvement of overall quality of life as far That's as improving one. energy levels yes. mm -hmm. and yeah. lean muscle mass, fat loss, recovery, yeah. lowering inflammation. Sleep quality. Sleep quality. It's a huge one, yes. right? A lot of people have a lot of problems sleeping these days. Um, and improving quality of life, like Chanel knocked that right on the head. That's my overall top benefit if anybody says mm -hmm. that, right Jess? Oh yeah. Um, because at that point it kind of covers, you know, everybody's different, so your quality of life may be different than my quality of life. Yes. But you know, the whole point is I guess to improve everybody's across the board. Absolutely. Uh, so that's cool. So what do, you, what do you think the top benefits you, you get from patients, you know, that tell you, hey listen Jess, you know, hormone replacement therapy, because I, the ones that, that really like give me chills, you've changed my life. Yes. That 100%. one right there, like you, you can't buy that feeling. Like there's nothing like it. Like that's like the best feeling in the world. Like to tell somebody else that you've changed their life, and for somebody like wow, like that's that's a pretty yes. big thing to say. Oh, to yeah. have it patients is. even to just say, you know, you've saved my marriage. I've lost a hundred yes. pounds. I feel yeah. better than I did when I was thirty. And I'm yes. fifty five. Yeah. It's fantastic. It is. It really is. So, so, I mean, what do you think as far as benefit wise? If it wasn't just quality of life, because I definitely that. That hear a lot about um, increased libido for okay. sure. Okay. Um, fatigue. So have much greater energy, um, and then weight loss. I hear a lot about weight That's loss as one. well. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that is a big one. It affects a lot of people out there right now that are obese and overweight. I mean, you know, and energy goes right along with it because usually, I mean, a lot of people that are obese or even eating bad foods um, is your fuel. They're lethargic. They're tired. Yeah. You got billions of dollars in energy drinks out there, over-the-counter supplementation that's trying to give people energy and giving them all kinds of garbage, I think, to yeah. a certain extent, if you guys want to agree on that. Um, but, yeah, it's, it's crazy, right? So, yes. uh, you know, HRT can be life-changing. I think the biggest benefit, like I said, is quality of life that Chanel covered. That is my biggest best. And at that point, it's helped me, right, over 11 years now myself. So I was a big believer, obviously, when it changed my life. It was like opening the shades for the first time and seeing the sunlight, I, I swear. So I got, you guys can laugh. I was a 98 on total testosterone when I did my testosterone when I was 29 years old. So yeah, that was uh, it was crazy, life-changing experience. So guys, if you guys wanna improve your overall quality of life, whatever it may be, then you guys need to contact us today. Call or text 727-389-3220 and check out TitanMedicalCenter.com and maybe you guys will get the book with these awesome nurse practitioners, Chanel and Jess. Yeah. We'll see you guys in the next one. Later. What's up guys, John in the Type Medical Center headquarters with one of my good friends, Bob Ciccarello and my beautiful wife, Cherise. Bob, how you liking the, the facility? Oh man, this was a great experience here. Finally made it to the Titan headquarters. Yeah. So I'm putting all the Titans together to make the most 
all-star team I think you could possibly do in our business. And having all these different years of knowledge and vast experience with some of these guys, especially from Bob, who's been it all, seen it all too as well, um, it's just going to be a big benefit for us. And it's just a long time coming. We've known each other for a long yeah. period of time. So for us to finally, you know, make it official and get together and partner up to do these things and, and run wild, we're really excited to do it. And we're glad Bob could come down, visit the facility, go through some of the process so he can tell people, you know, exactly what's going to go on with them and how we can help them too. So All it's right. a great, great thing. So we're glad to have you here, Bob. Voice sure. of bodybuilding now, the voice of Titan Medical. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. Where's See? Oh, oh. Get one of those. We're going to get a Titan tuxedo. I like that. Oh, I like that. Good exactly. thinking, Cherise. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, That's yeah, right. Yeah. So maybe I'll hook him up with, with my tailors because all on the inside of my jackets are all tight medical center line. Oh, nice. yeah. Could be some new duds coming for the Olympia. For sure. So I, I think I might make that happen here. We'll, yeah. we'll see. So you guys got to stay tuned. Make sure you guys are keeping it locked to tight medical center and the voice of bodybuilding to my man, Bob Chicarello. And you guys will get all the information and all the things that we can do to help you guys look better, feel better, and perform better every single day. So stick with us, live a tight lifestyle, and perform optimally like you know you can. All Tighten right. up. Let's do it. results for all our patients. Blood work from LabCorp usually takes three to four business days okay. and we have the results back and then we have a medical contact yes. with the patient, kind of give them a briefing of what the provider looked at sure. and then ask them if they want to get set up for a medical consultation. This potion, I think we're going to introduce Bob to Hercules. All right, Let's here we go. I could use some Hercules. All right, what do we got here? Let's see. So we got glutamine, arginine, ornithine, lysine, L-citrulline, proline, taurine, NAC, and L-carnitine. What's up guys, John here. I'm Sharice. And we are here for the next Titan Medical Movie Review, just for you. Just for you. And uh, if you can't guess what we've seen this week, this guy right here, Blue Beetle. So Blue Beetle, if you don't know who he is, is a comic book character. And at that point, it's a DC comic book character, all right? Not a Marvel one. So for this one, it was a special little thing, I guess, to a lot of DC fans. The reason is the DCEU is finally done and now the DCU is coming into effect. If you don't know what that is, that means the Snyderverse is through, that means Harry Carvelli, Ben Affleck, all these characters from Justice League that you see before are scrapped and now the DC is starting over. So at this point this week, um, you know, Blue Beetle came out and uh, it was pretty good. I mean, I liked it. I thought it was pretty good as far as um, accuracy from the comics, so that was good. Uh, the film was really good. 
the special effects were good too. You know, with CGI, everybody thinks it's going to come out great all the time. A lot of people learned that from The Flash, including the DC studio. Boo! Because that CGI was horrible in that movie, and everybody agrees on that. So, um, you know, Blue Beetle definitely was a, you know, was going to be a, like a make it or break it type thing for the DC, you know, DCU especially. And uh, James Gunn and Peter Sanfran. So at that point, uh, you know, I hopefully it, it does well. It's supposed to do pretty good. We'll see how it does. But I, I, give, I give it a 4.0. What do you think? Yeah, no. Um, it was yeah, good. No. Yeah, no. <laughs> it was good. I thought it, I honestly thought it was way better than I thought it was going to be. Because I don't know this character, to be totally honest with you guys. Um, and so I had to go into the movie not knowing the character. So I'm like, I don't know, you know, because sometimes these characters come off a little cheesy. But this movie is actually surprisingly good for a DC movie, especially with all you bad DC movies lately. I mean, Shazam. back to back Flash. to back wasted money, DC. Um, so anyways, this is a good investment. Um, I think it was really, really good. And uh, a little Cobra Kai action in here from uh, whatever his name is. Oh, yeah. Um, but it was good. I will give it a 3.1. 3.1. And that's because I thought it was pretty good. Man. I thought it was good. Hey, strays is the leading the movie strays. of the whole year. The Strays. I don't even want to go back that to That was the movie of the year. <laughs> so if you don't got anything to do this weekend, you like <laughs> if superhero you movies. Do, if you don't have anything to do, go see in the, the Beetle movie. Go see Blue Beetle. You guys will enjoy it, I promise. Uh, there'll be some laughs. There'll be a lot of action. And uh, I think you'll enjoy it all the way through and through. So that's the movie review from Type Medical this week. And we got more coming for you in the future. Just for you. What's up, guys? I'm John. I'm Cherise. And we're back with another Cupid's Corner. So every week we like to come to you guys with these tips and tricks or different things that possibly help your relationship now or your future relationship if you're not in one. So at that point, we always go over some great, great topics that are going to help you either way. And this week is no different. So we want to cover something that was really going to help people either find the right person that they're looking for or as a couple really align themselves better to what they want to do and for their future. Mm -hmm. So... For this, it's uh, really knowing where you're going, okay? And why I, why I say that is, is that know your goals. So if you're single, you've already probably been through past relationships mm -hmm. or past things that have hurt you or uh, you don't want to go through again or certain things that you're looking for in a partner because you didn't get them before or maybe you just are more attracted to these different traits. So at that point, you'll, you'll automatically, I think, you know, unconsciously. Yeah, some things you just don't want. Do you know you don't want? Right, you're 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 attracted to some people, right? Preferences and stuff like that, um, whether their looks or the way they talk or something like that, which gets you interested in this this person. <laughs> um, and at that point, you guys start diving into each other. Okay, whether it's first dates. Um, and mind you, some people they have when he said, you know, know where you're going. Like some people have no idea where yeah, they're going. Some people don't. You know, and people I don't. guess you might be have to be okay with that. Yeah. You might be able to help direct traffic yep. and, you know, help get them to where they're trying to go. Yeah. But, um, you know, some people don't want to put the work in. <laughs> some people don't. But, you know, at least know where you're going. And by, by the means of that, like, mm -hmm. you should, like I said, you've dealt with something before and you kind of know where you're going in that avenue of who you're looking for. All right? So when you're going to these different things, obviously you have some different goals for yourself of what you want to achieve in life, whether it's a career or it's children or... Uh, you don't want children, whatever it is. Uh, I mean, at that point, you know, financially, you want to get somewhere, a house you want to get, or whatever it is. Um, and obviously, nothing's perfect. So <laughs> you got to be willing to adapt through time. Um, don't give up the things that you really want, but you might have to adapt because you never know when those curveballs are coming. It's always going to happen. You can sit there and plan out your fairy tale life, right? Yeah. Like, oh my goodness, you know, we're all, both going to have great jobs, we're going to have four children and they're gonna we're gonna have four dogs and a big white picket fence and the grass is always gonna be super green and okay. watered you know it it just doesn't work out that way all the time you know <sighs> and it's not like I, I bet even the like most well-off person on this planet yeah. has been through a, 
a rough time for sure at some point for sure you know so you do have to adapt to the different changes or you know even when you're with somebody for this long like me and john we've been together forever people tend to change True. okay and you might need to adapt with the change you know because you might meet them and they might be one way and let's just say for instance you guys meet <clears> each <throat> other and you guys are high school sweethearts right that's a good example because a lot of people change between i think anyway between the ages of like 18 and 30. Yeah. You know, like just they change a lot uh, just based on, I don't know, just things in life, I guess. But I mean, some people change and go this way and some people change and go this way, That's right. you know, and some people will never meet back in the middle. Oh. So you just have to adapt to those kinds of changes. You got to make sure that you guys are growing together. And we've talked about that before. Um, but the goals that you're kind of looking for, like I said, what you're expecting out of life and what you want to get. Now, you know, some of these goals, you know, you talk to the person, if you're, let's say you're single, you know, when do you bring this up? It's the first thing. Just not, probably not the first date. Not the first date. Right? First date should probably be like, and I haven't dated forever, obviously, but I go on dates with her, but <laughs> we already know this stuff about each other, so I'm not asking these questions. But it was, okay, by the you way. Know, you're getting to know somebody and probably, you know, going into, you know, like, should I go on a second date? Like, to so this person, you know, you'll, you'll know right off the bat. Like, it's pretty much instant connection to a degree on first dates uh, where it's either there or not. First dates? Dates. Yeah, multiple dates. You can probably go on a couple. Multiple or a couple, I guess. Yeah. But I mean, there's got to be something that draws interest right, to go right, on right. a second date, right, right, right? right? For sure. Because if there's not, you're like, all right, if you're you're sitting there and it's Decline like... Decline when they call. And it's like an awkward, and like, silence. Like, you guys yeah, can't talk. Yeah, weird. Okay? Like, that. that's probably... There's probably no interest there unless you're just that shy and the other person thinks it's that cute. <laughs> it, it really isn't. When you sit there and it's just, there's no silence. Like, listen, if you're the guy, try to lead the conversation. Talk about, you know, something. Find some sort of interest, common interest, and then talk about it. And that's usually what happens, or it just naturally comes. Like, you guys could be, like, just people watching, like, oh, my God, I moved the waitress just said that, and start laughing about it, and that drives another conversation. You can always treat it just like if you were in a job interview, and yeah. you ask them, so tell me a little bit about yourself. Well, I mean, I guess. And usually that does open up, like, okay, tell me what you like to do, you yeah. know, things like that. But, you know, as John brought up in the beginning, yeah. you know, in that time frame, in those first few dates, you guys should be able to uh, like align goals, you know, like you guys kind of have some sort of similar goals or at least and know what that person's You guys are going to have are. some sort of similar interest, right? And then the interests are like things that you guys like to do or you, you guys you have some common goal or interest into doing. Like some people like to go to festivals. Some people like to go work out together. Some, I mean, it's just a million different one things that people have out there, movies, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. And that draws co common interest together, bring you guys to a, a middle point, a middle ground. You guys are like, oh, man, I want to find out more about this person. And that's really where the details really come into play. Like, you know, do you want children? You know, and this is some very serious conversations. And these things can change over time, too. True. Right? That's very true. So don't automatically knock somebody out. But if somebody says, listen, I, I, I absolutely do not want to do this, like I'm totally against it, or maybe it's religion barriers or whatever it is, it's gonna be an uphill I mean, battle. Think about it though, you you know, just to throw this out there, I, mean, I wanna say it's a small percentage, but I mean, even on like shows that we watch, 90 Day Fiance, we yeah. love that show by the way, um, but on even on that show, some people, and I think I ran into somebody recently, they never wanted kids. Like yep. never ever wanted kids. Yep. I don't want kids. I met you. I told you I didn't want kids. Yep. We went through years of dating. I yep. told you I didn't want kids. Yep. And the other person stayed hopeful for X period of time. Yep. And then at some point they might've met them at that halfway point where, hey, you know what? I'll, I think we can have a kid. Right. You know, it's just, times change. I've had friends, literally. Uh, my, Small percentage. I have one of my good friends, Tony Cannon, right? He's like, I'm never having kids ah. ever. Never <laughs> having kids ever. Never having kids ever. Oh, yeah. Uh, he married an awesome Muslim girl, doctor, the whole nine, and he has two kids now. Girls, right? He's really happy. The two girls? Yeah. <laughs> so I think he's got a girl and a son, so he's got both. Um, but he's real happy. But that's just, that's just a, you know, an example. Right. Just things can change over time once you get in a relationship and you know, love does certain things and certain things you adapt to and certain things you'll bend to and certain things, things people won't. won't. Yeah. So you got to know where those certain things are absolutely out. And at that point, if that's going to go against what you want, you know, that's that's where you're going to have to make up the decision for yourself. Should I stay in this relationship or should I not? Because you might have a lot of time invested. Yeah. Vested time. Vested time you cannot get back. 
But uh, you should be able to find out this information yeah. honestly probably within the first month. I would say at least three months. You know, like in those three months because That'd be a month, right? I mean, dating wise, just depends. Well, I mean, depends no, how many dates. Not I'm everybody's talking. like me and John. We I'm moved in two not, weeks after being I'm with each not other. Saying that. That's that's that's. I don't serious, put anybody in our serious. category. Because if anybody's Seriously. in our category, like one of my friends coached me told me what was going on, I'm like, man, you better <laughs> slow crazy. it the hell down. Right? You got a lot of shit, whatever. I come over and be like, stuff. um, yeah, so uh, which drawer is mine now? Yeah. I, need, I got stuff. Yeah, watch out for that. Got some stuff. Red flags. <laughs> There's a lot of red flags. <laughs> But um, because you don't want that either, some guys don't want that. So that's a yeah, major turnoff true. for some guys, and like yeah. guys are like it's that might much. push them away. So yeah. girls, take note. Like you don't true. push it on the guy. And now, you know, after a certain amount of time, like it's expected, right? And, and you know, you guys should be progressing in the relationship. So if it's not progressing, then there's a problem there too. Are you talking about like getting a ring? I'm not talking about just getting the ring, but I'm talking about progression. So, like, you know, if people date for, and there's, I'm not going to put a time period on it, but Don't people, put time. people date in stages. And if that stage is progressing. Like, you know, you guys are past the dating stage. You guys are now a couple. Mm -hmm. Okay. You guys have been a couple for a long time. You guys are spending all this time. You guys are aligning yourselves, your friends, your goals, your hobbies. Then, you know, it's, it's on. You know, at that point, you know, possibly moving in with each other or, or marriage, you know, before moving. It depends on what religion is and the way that you think. But you really never know somebody until you move in with them. So true. You don't know anybody until you live with them. You know, that's it, a true statement. You, you know, you really do. It, it's not a weekend vacation. I'm talking <laughs> about it, you know, you're living with them. Yeah. So you know everything. It's not like one night. It's multiple nights. You know where they throw their clothes. Yeah. You know that they put their toothbrush on the uh, yep. on the sink counter instead of putting in the little in the little bucket. Or even in the shower. You know, I you leave mine know. in the shower, but I have I have a new I have a new toothbrush every day. <laughs> You know, this is like, true. He's like, you left your toothbrush in the shower. True. I'm like, yeah, I know. I brushed my teeth in there, and I got a brand new one. Thanks. So, you know, <laughs> there's different things that you learn about somebody, and then there's, there's certain things that might turn you off about that, and just some yeah. things you're just not good with. Yeah. And this will definitely think, and you guys can talk about it. Yeah, sometimes, key. sometimes you can fix it. Yeah. Like, you can change it. I, I mean, obviously, if there's an issue, obviously, you want to bring it up to the partner. If you're going to go further relationship, mm -hmm. there's things that you just cannot go, you know, go with. Then at that point, you know, you have to cut your losses, your losses. too. And that happens a lot in business and life, um, mm -hmm. you know, and in love. You might have to cut your losses because it might be detrimental to you. It might be toxic to you. You never know that. And it just might be holding you back in a lot of ways, shapes, and forms. Um, but at that point, like I said, talk it out. If you really think that the relationship is worthwhile and you really want to be with that person, obviously mm -hmm. communication is key. Communication. That's the first part. <laughs> and then they're going to let you know right away. They're going to tell you, yes, yes, yes. And then actions after what are going to back up. Actions, I, d I definitely actions. think in the first, like, I would say the first few dates, I think, like, the big things should come out, like, you know, whether or not you want kids. Um, another one it would be because I know me personally, when I met somebody, if you had kids, we nice. weren't going forward. I just didn't do baggage. Nice. Sorry. Um, that's just me personally. Um, but kids aren't bags. <laughs> I mean, if they weren't my kids, <laughs> they I'm were joking. bags. I'm kidding. Oh my god. <laughs> what do you want me to say? I'm being honest. You guys okay. know I'm brutally honest. Okay. So don't don't judge okay. me for it. Okay. So anyways, but some things are deal breakers, you know. So you got to come up with those deal breakers. And you got to know those. I think in the first thirty days, yeah, like I, these are deal breakers. Like you know, if it's a religion thing, you might have to. Let's say you might have to get married a certain way in a certain place, and it has to be. Maybe it's something you just don't agree with, and. Yeah. It's something you won't bend for. Like these are different things that will change. And then usually, if something like that happens, then the families get involved after that, and then that's a whole different eh, ball game. That's ugly. So it's yeah. just it's certain things that you want to just take in consideration. Now, if you don't care about all the other, you know, the issues or and stuff like that, because once you go forward with these things, and let's say there is some some friction in some of these different areas, like family, religion, or whatever it is, or, or mm -hmm. things that you're dealing with that partner. You better be ready to, to fight the uphill battle or uh, be, you know, in it to win it mm -hmm. and not just like, all right, well, I'm just going to give up because you might as well just stop right there yeah, and just, so and just end the time. relationship and go on and move on because it's not worth your trouble. It's not worth the stress. It's not worth that, their stress or, or time either. So at least just be fair on them, that, that, that aspect. I agree. Because uh, at that point, it's gonna it's gonna hurt your feelings, his feelings, or and maybe even versa. cause some barriers within family. You know, between True. the mom and the dad, or True. you know, you become a barrier in between them, and then you know what happens after that? True. Resentment. Now listen, you don't have to get along with your in laws. It happens a lot where you don't get along with your in laws, yeah. but you at least 
go along you with have things. To be amicable. Amicable because <laughs> you're a partner and you love your partner, right? It's not being disrespectful to anybody. It's right. support for your partner, support for their family. You know, if you have kids involved, you don't want you know, you don't want your kids uh, on the outside per se. You want mm-hmm. them involved with the family too as well. So, you know, it's just certain things that you eat up and you adapt to over time and uh, that will make you the best that you possibly can and the best for your relationship that you can possibly do. So these are just some of the different things. Now, financial planning is a whole different ball game. You guys are going to want to look at that aspect too. The order that you get, don't just think about tomorrow. Think about, listen, down the road, especially if you do have kids or you guys have goals. You guys want to have some financial goals together of what you guys want to accomplish together, whether it's, you know, if you're wanting to get your own house or you want to be able to retire at a certain age um, or certain different things. And you guys got to be in that together and you guys got to be on the same page. And, and like you guys are both working to a common goal. The mission's the exact same. You guys are on the same page working toward the exact same things. And this goes for everything you do in your relationship. 100%. I mean, don't forget that there is online banking apps now. So you can always ask him to just pull that up and just make sure it's all going to work out. Ooh. <laughs> I heard the credit scores are a Ooh, thing now. Oh, yeah. Pull up the FICO. Pull up the, pull up the FICO <laughs> score. Let me I'm see like, your experience. I want to see experience. <laughs> I want to see TransUnion. Like, hold on one second, sir. I, I, I just I want to make sure we're all on the same page here. Equifax. So just... You better pull it all out. But here's my credit board now. Let, let me. Yeah, see, listen, now that's another thing, right? Because it's pretty serious. Like, yeah, it is. You know, when you go into it and you meet somebody, you don't think about, and I, I would. You really don't. And a lot of people don't. There are girls out there or guys out there that look for this. Ask but they say, hey, listen, what's your credit score? I was kidding. You know, you know uh, how's your credit score? How, how are you doing? Like, that's something you don't think about. But once you get into that relationship and now you have all this best of time, and let's say you get engaged and get married, now you're bringing everything together. Mm-hmm. So at that point, you know, you're bringing other things into the marriage or the relationship, not kids. Like, wait a minute, I didn't sign up but to buy your car. Financial baggage. I didn't sign up. I, wait, I didn't sign up to have the house, and I'm going to buy the whole house. I thought we we wanted a house together, right? You know, and then you're thinking one thing, and one thing is another, and these are pretty like personal things. You really just you don't ask somebody what is your credit, you know, your credit score. You just don't say that. I, there, there's but, some people out there do. Well, or them, or the thing is, is looking the person up afterwards because now you can pay to do that very inexpensively. It's actually about three ninety nine, I think. And you know what? Dollars, Listen, it's a good thing to a certain yeah. degree. I don't like it, but it's a, it's like a good it. thing, a bad <laughs> thing, because it could tell you a lot of information about that person. Um, it is breaking some some different trust, I think, with that person too, like going behind their back and doing something like this. But I do know people that do this, and they look up per- people, you know, before they get dating them seriously like they meet them on the first date or two and then at that point they run this background check on somebody <laughs> <laughs> and they get all the information oh my God. and then they wait because it's brewing in their mind they want to bring it up to that person because they know already <laughs> so they're just waiting for that person to bring it out and they might lead them with some questions and at that point like they really know so you know yeah. you never know who's looked you up either on google or anything else so these are just some of the different tips and tricks <laughs> that we want to help you guys out with this week All right, guys, I'm John. I'm Sharice. And we're out of here. We'll see you next Sunday with another Cupid's Corner. See you then.